Let's come into a comfortable seat for meditation or a comfortable posture for meditation. Anything that is conducive to vibrant, alert stillness. So that means we're not using our postural muscles strongly to keep ourselves upright, but we have um, as much as possible, a spine that is balanced, if you're in any of the upright postures, a spine that's not slumping back. One of the big problems with the backs of chairs and backs of couches and really anything where we're leaning back onto support is that, um, is that we collapse the belly. And in collapsing the belly, the breath um, doesn't move as as smoothly, fully, deliciously, well-supportedly, groundingly, groundedly, as we might like it to. So as much as our bodies permit, it's really lovely to sit in a way where the low back, the lumbar spine, rests into its natural curve, which is curving toward the front of the body. The belly is soft and the sternum and solar plexus gently lifting. Initially, this does take a little muscular effort, and we want to do that with as little effort as possible. And let the spine come toward a natural, balanced, upright column, resting into its curves. The curves of the spine actually are part of what helps the central column of the body be really vertical, right? If it was just a straight vertical stack, it would be much more vulnerable to fracture, tipping over, it wouldn't be as flexible. But because it's an S-curve, it has this beautiful uh, resilience to it. So we want to maintain those curves as much as possible, which also might mean uh, finding the right tilt of the head on the neck. And often we have to rebuild the cervical curve, which gets uh, flattened and even inverted through the dropping of the head and computer and phone neck and so many other things. So you can let your head just gently track toward the wall behind you, soften through the neck, let the chin drop and soften back. Coming into the practice of mindfulness with breathing, anapanasati, and beginning with a few long breaths. Just clearing the energetic system, you can breathe till you're quite full, bringing in energy and a relaxed, long exhale. You can stretch out the exhale. It's really letting the system settle from whatever you've been doing today up to this point. We call this mindfulness, but Anapanasati is really as much an energy cultivation practice as it is an attention practice. Feeling the 
shift in your energy as you breathe deeply. Maybe a couple more of those. Even holding the breath at the top for a few moments before you let it go. Hmm. And when you're ready to let the long breaths go, relax the effort, and let a shorter natural breath come in and out, and settle into a quite unforced breath. Just begin the process of relaxing. And the shorter breath may give a sense of the energetic body that's not so much about the, the deep, you know, moving of air in and out, the long breaths, but you get a subtler sense of the vibrations of the body. And the third step after long and short breaths is to breathe feeling the whole body. You really feel as you breathe. Feel the shoulders and arms, hands. Feel the whole torso from the upper ribs to the solar plexus, to the belly, to the bowl of the pelvis. And feel the legs. This is really a deepening in somatic presence, deepening the sense of proprioception, sensing the body in its posture, and interoception, feeling the body from the inside. You can use lots of different methods to stitch together the sense of the whole body. You could do a, a body scan or sweep, down from the head to the toes or up. You could go part by part, one limb at a time, one part of the torso at a time. I like to just feel the whole body in its posture and then expand or pulse or press the sense of breath energy outward from the ballet and chest out into the whole body. And the fourth step is to relax the body. And the word used is the same word as we use for tranquility. So you could say relax, calm, make tranquil the body. But it also points to the, the volitional or or doing aspect of restlessness. And so one thing we can do here also is to let go of doing any intentional movement. And so you relax, not just relax the musculature, but you relax the impulse to move anything. This is a practice of itself. It's a deep stillness practice. So we have breath energy, we have the sense of the whole body, and then this stilling and settling and relaxing of the whole body. Even if you can attend to all of that a little, you'll start to feel a shift in vibration and it kind of hum through the whole body. If anything intense arises, just let the eyes open, breathe naturally, let your attention come out of the body a little, and so just come into an ordinary mind, so that we're grounded in the space we're in, and just let it pass through. Keeping attention inward and focused will tend to amplify whatever is coming, at least until concentration kicks in.
So we have a sense of whole body energy, presence. And then in the next step, we encourage that energy to get stronger. So as we breathe in and out, cultivating piti or rapture. And that is this vibration energy in the body. Along with that comes the next step, happiness or sukha. So there's a physical or somatic pleasure and an emotional or heart pleasure. This is really just an exploration. Do you enjoy the experience of being in your body in this kind of stillness? How could you enjoy it more? What's most delicious about this state, these states? And here we can lean in even a little more, remembering the image given for the first state of absorption, the first jhana, the images of a bath attendant kneading water into a ball of bath powder so that the ball of bath powder is fully saturated with the water. but does not drip. So there's a moistening and also a bringing all of the disparate parts together. And the action is kneading, kneading like dough. So you have a sense of the vibrating energy in the body-mind, pleasure, even if it's very subtle, it's a somatic, emotional pleasure. And now the step, the practice, is using attention and breath, need that energy through the body, needing the rapture and pleasure born of seclusion, meaning born of the senses being undistracted, into the whole body. So the whole body is saturated with rapture and pleasure. Well, sometimes we have access to this and sometimes we don't. But if it feels a little dull or dim, you might deepen the breath and use the breath to press or knead the buzzy energy of the body. Just make it bigger. Send it out into the limbs. Send it down into the legs. Fill the belly with it. I'm just experimenting here kneading, pressing, breathing, the energy of the relaxed, present body-mind so that it increases and grows and fills us. And the final two steps for this evening, steps seven and eight, 
even with this massaging of pleasurable energy into the body, into the somatic sense, there's still thoughts moving through. Thoughts and images, ideas, memories, plans. So notice these. Step seven is to notice the formations in the mind. This is usually discursive thought and images. This piece is an aspect of mindfulness. Be aware of these patterns when they're happening. Aware of thoughts, feelings. And then step eight, in the same way that awareness of the whole body was followed by bringing to tranquility the whole body. Here, awareness of the stuff in the mind is followed by bringing to stillness the thinking mind. And one way to do this is to stop thinking for a moment and really listen to the silence when there's no words in your mind. Really learn to recognize that silence. We'll sit in silence from here. And so the play is both to keep the sense of vibrant somatic energy kneading through the whole body, increasing and getting big through the body. And then along with that, coming into really stilling mental content. And you can do this by listening to the silence that's there when the thinking stops for a moment, wherever you can get a wedge in. And really connect attention with the breathing and the bodily energy and use the strength of that connection to just not make any space for the mind to fill up with anything else. Find the right delicate balance of effort to accomplish this. Oh, sitting together in silence.
And we'll end the sitting in the period of stillness, wherever you're at, gathering again the attention and breath and body together. Settling the mind out of the groove of thought if it's been caught. And I'll end with the great heart mantra of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om, the, the great jewel at the heart of wisdom. Om Mani Padme Hum. I think this is a Tibetan version of melody. I'll sing it a few times around. If you're in a space where you can make sound, you can sing it with. Oh, 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 Letting go of the chant and the meditation.